What do you feel your greatest achievements are? Camps? Yeah. Well, we uh, raised three hundred thousand dollars for mm -hmm. relief work um, in South mm -hmm. Asia, in uh, Indonesia, and uh, for Katrina mm -hmm. relief yeah. in the U.S. And um, I think that would be pretty high up. We're also um, partnered with uh, CECF, a Civilizations mm -hmm. Exchange Program, uh, going abroad. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm speaking on behalf of the international organizations since I mm -hmm. represent uh, Camp International. Um, but yeah, we've been going abroad. We've got delegates going abroad uh, to Jordan, mm -hmm. Egypt, and yeah. Syria, acting as ambassadors of peace. Mm -hmm. So representing um, the North American environment, but going over there and being representatives mm -hmm. of peace. Um, aside from that, uh, I think we've been pretty successful in bringing together Muslims from all over. Um, we, we're probably more well known for the fun aspect of camp. We're not a boring organization. How come nobody invited me now? <laughs> well, we can invite you to our gala dinner. It's taking place on June 2nd, so yes. you're more than welcome to come. And nice food. <laughs> Great, Great food. food. Okay. <laughs> but more importantly, this gala dinner is actually highlighting Canadian, uh, Muslim mm -hmm. Canadian contributions to yeah. society. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that we're going to be looking at and and um, embracing mm -hmm. is the idea of Muslims mm -hmm. contributing to this society here. That's we right. live here, and mm -hmm. we need to contribute to this society. What would your advice be to a young Muslim? Why to join, and how is this going to help them advance? Well, one of the things that we want to do for our young Muslim students mm -hmm. who are in university, um, they should come and liaise with the people at Camp Toronto mm -hmm. in particular because we have a lot of professionals who mm -hmm. are in the, at the midpoint in their career, have gone through all the hurdles. We know different people to contact. Mm -hmm. We can mentor you. Mm -hmm. We can give you ideas. We can give you some advice. We can look at resumes. These are all things mm -hmm. that Camp Toronto offers. Yeah, and you can, you know, I mean, like the job market yeah. mm -hmm. um, is yeah. not always in the newspaper or on yeah. TorontoJobShops.com. Right. Right. You know, a lot of times mm -hmm. people are getting hired through contacts that Absolutely. they've made, and we've got yeah. many people within our network who found jobs or who've mm -hmm. advanced in their careers because of people who are part of the network. So young, old, we've got everyone, you know, uh, male, female, mm -hmm. um, various backgrounds. Would and more help? importantly, I also mm -hmm. think that um, living in this society, we often get to socialize with our coworkers mm -hmm. who may or may not be Muslim, and, and yeah. we need to do that. That's part of living mm -hmm. here. But we also need to have the opportunity to socialize with Muslims from different backgrounds um, to really make our community stronger because unfortunately this is not happening in the masjids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We aren't socializing, we aren't talking, we aren't the getting to know one another. The is supposed to be the place for all this, That's but right. as you said, it, unfortunately it's it not isn't. happening. So. Yeah. And I also think that it's... Um, it's a link as well, like mm -hmm. especially for the younger groups. I mean, you know, there's MSAs when you're in university, yeah. when you're in colleges. Mm -hmm. But once you get out of that, you know, you're like Rubina said, you're so busy in your your own work environment, you don't have that, mm -hmm. you know, time to really connect with other Muslims, yeah. you know, on a professional level or on a social level. So mm -hmm. this is one way of giving back, you know, as a service that you know, we can all. But let me together. tell you this: some people will say, uh, us as Muslims, maybe we spend too much time together. Do we need? to encourage spending more time, or how do we become uh, part of the society? I don't I think that's the case, though, because, you know, 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, we're all in a mixed mm -hmm. bag, you know, mm -hmm. working. You know, mm -hmm. we're all in the work environment, yeah. and, you know, the camp, uh, camp events provide an opportunity for you mm -hmm. to break away from that routine right. and be able to take a break, whether it's bowling, whether mm -hmm. you're going out for movies, or whether you're just sitting down and having you know, discussions over chai or coffee mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. that's an opportunity where you can say, okay, you don't have to go to the bars, you don't have to go to the clubs. We have a halal mm -hmm. alternative where yeah. you can meet with other yep. people of like minds and be mm -hmm. able to enjoy yourself, sit back and enjoy. Yeah. And it's when it's time to pray, you don't have to explain why you have to get up and go mm -hmm. and make right. wadu and, and yeah. stop for prayers. So. Absolutely. Do you get situations where non-Muslims attend these meetings? Yes, of course, and we encourage that. Um, mm -hmm. We recently had a book club mm -hmm. where um, we have brought friends along when we mm -hmm. were discussing certain books. We read um, Stephen Luce's Race Against Time, mm -hmm. and we had a great discussion, and we had people come in that were not Muslims. Mm -hmm. They got to know us um, 
on a more intimate level, and they were able to um, were able to realize that you know Muslims don't just talk about um, what's going wrong with the world. They mm -hmm. have they have discussions about other things. That's right. Actually, at the Starlight Starbright Foundation, mm -hmm. we were volunteering to put together toys for mm -hmm. hospitals for children yeah. in the hospitals. And uh, we had a, uh, you know, we had some non-Muslims there as well mm -hmm. with us. And, you know, we mm -hmm. were all, you know, on the production line putting these That's bags right. together mm -hmm. for the kids. And, you know, yep. when it comes time to getting a job done, it doesn't matter who you're doing That's it right. with. We yeah. did the same, actually, when we had, during the mm -hmm. summer, the Relay for Life for the Canadian mm -hmm. Cancer Society. Um, we had a group come out, and a few of them were non-Muslims. And uh, it was great to see everybody come together and That's contribute. That's great. Let me read this part of an email that... Uh, a non-Muslim lady had sent, and her question was, can Islam gender gap be fixed? And my reply to her is, we should not say Islam gender gap because Islam has no gender gap. We, the question should be, could Muslim gender gap be fixed? Because we should realize somehow there is a, mon a gender gap mentally or culturally mm -hmm. in some Muslims. And what's your answer? Could it be fixed? <laughs> Um, it depends where you live. If yeah. you're in North America, definitely. Um, I think the younger generation for sure, mm -hmm. and probably the last generation, um, would probably be mm -hmm. more reflective of that narrowing gap. Uh, if you were looking at immigrants, if you're looking at places overseas mm -hmm. and you know, in countries that are not so advanced, mm -hmm. then you're going to see that gender gap. But that is not because of Islam, it's because of people. Okay. Cultural. Mm -hmm. From your own personal experience, do you feel there is a personal gap, a uh, gender gap? In my family, no, it's equal opportunity. When it snows a lot, mm -hmm. I'm out there shoveling with my brothers. Oh, right. your brothers <laughs> love that. that. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. so, so, you know, and so how do you explain to people this is a cultural issue, has nothing to do with mm -hmm. Islam. As I mentioned, the lady started by saying Islam, gender gap, misunderstanding, mm -hmm. it is Muslims, mm -hmm. and yes, it, it exists. But, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, if it's not happening here in North America or not as much, you know, there is hope. Mm -hmm. So what's your feeling, you know, about this gender gap? I agree with Rose. I think that um, it really depends on where you live. But in North mm -hmm. America, it's, it's much, it's very different because, you know, children are going to school. We're being brought up in a such a way where, you know, equal opportunity mm -hmm. and, you know, gender equality is, is at least to an extent taught. Um, and so... It seems that you know it's it's much less here. There might be you know some people depending on where they're from. I think that the, this generation and new you know new children and, and younger generations mm -hmm. will definitely see you know a decrease in that gap. As we so, what's on. your message to this lady about could Islam gender gap or Muslim gender gap be fixed? Um, I would actually recommend um, this lady to probably maybe even open up the Quran and uh, take a look at some of the opportunities that women were given as far as inheritance, but as far she's as... She's looking at the society today and saying, what I see today, rather than mm, yeah. what we have. Open uh, your mind, look, at, look more. Well, Don't just look at one, one area. But that's to our to job to explain. It is, it definitely right. is our job. I would probably say to her that what she sees is often not reflective of what's actually in Islam. And, and that's our that's job to problem. reflect it. We've that's run right. out of time. This is an interesting topic. Thank you very much. And we'll see you soon, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.